Hi, everybody. This is Heather Lockett. We are back with the Dr. Reverend Minister Laurel Geist today for another part of our lovely conversation. Thank you so much. We'll now circle back into your soul guided journaling, um, uh-huh. where if we're now, some people talk about stream of consciousness or um, even recording with your voice or something and let it, let it sit. You've mentioned this and you do have a handout about the soul journaling, but letting it come out, letting the invitation, um, the invitations, letting the information stream on through, and maybe it's for your now, and maybe it's for later on. Um, so it sounds like moments like that, you received all this information and, and then there's, is there a next or a not yet? And, all the different aspects of these things. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and that's why I love soul guided journaling so much. And I've been teaching this almost 30 years because it started for me after I started meditating and I was just simply guided to do this. And it's a, first, let me explain the technique and then we can talk more about it. But what's interesting. So I meditate. That's um, the way that I find my center, my peace my stillness. And did you do that prior to the 2012 or the 2008 or yes. had you, had you began your own um, practices, if you yes. will, or for me personally, everything for me, that's why I kind of giggled about the 2012 because yeah. you know, my life went ha ha ha. Yeah. And then it was 2013 <laughs> where we met. It was okay. the 2013 and, okay. and yes, your book was invaluable to me. Um, because I had to start there. I literally had to start there. So were you even during uh, your corporate life and your other perhaps church or unchurch upbringing? So you actually began your uh, walk a long time ago. Yeah, I began my, so in 1995, so almost 30 years. Okay. And that's when I learned how to meditate. And it was not much longer after that where this soul guided journaling came to me. And it was, and it was like, okay, so, um, you know, I'm meditating for 20, 30 minutes in the morning. And I have the journal there and I simply allow whatever comes to me to be uh, captured in the journal. So it could be, because in the beginning it was like a couple of words. Maybe it would be a couple of sentences. Um, sometimes I, I like draw a picture. Maybe it would be colors, you know, maybe an emotion. I mean, it's not limited as to, you know, how your soul is communicating with you, right? So you have this, right. <clears throat> I call it like the soul connection time where I'm in the quiet, the stillness, and I can just allow that bond with my soul, you know, that communication to be received and it's just a direct revelation of the soul to your awareness right and so i receive it and then um and i don't care about spelling or grammar or any of that you know it's just whatever comes comes and then i put it away now here's the what i call the secret to soul guided journaling is because i do believe um that if you try to read what you just received I found that my ego, my personality got in the way. My personality was like, well, this is just the silliest thing you've ever done. And why are you going to write this down? And why would you listen to that? You know, I mean, it was really pronounced for me. And so I was like, well, that's, I can't, um, I can't, you know, receive this. So I put the journal away. And then what I did was I read it the next morning. And so a couple of things. Number one, every day when you wake up, you have something to read from your soul. It's a gift every single day. And then I read this. But what I found is that, you know, the first time you read it and you can read it in this space of, you know, the ego not being right there to criticize it. You can actually cognize it the way that your soul meant for you to receive it, because, as you know, like this is a multidimensional communication. So there's a lot of layers to it. And so I may read it today and then I go into my meditation and then I do the soul journaling again and put it away and then do the same thing day after day. 
Now, here's what, here's the beauty. So many beautiful things about it. But is the fact that I like to go back like once a month and I like to read everything that I have received in that month. Because the more you read it and reread it, you begin to, there are layers and layers to the information that you're receiving. And then I like to go back once a quarter and read. And I can see, you know, by looking back, I can see forward. I can see where my path is going. And then the most fun thing to do is at the end of the year is to read the whole year's worth. And when you do that, I like to call it the heroine's journey because you can literally see your own evolutionary journey right. unfolding in front of you. And it is, to me, it's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to yourself if you're choosing to actively participate in your conscious evolution. I love that you just said that because the thought came into my own mind is the word editor. And so I can, I've had plenty of times where all this information, all this beautiful stuff comes pouring out, um, whether it makes sense or not. But as you were just finishing this piece of the conversation, I was thinking of that self-editing. So what you just said, um, if we allow the information and allow and basically step out of our own way, right? And allow our judges, our self-judges, our editors that yeah. want to get it right, or I don't dare put this on paper, or what will some, what will somebody think? Or what will I think about myself? What all those little, wow, that's very powerful. So you want to talk to us about that? Because you've, you've been leading groups in the soul journaling, and have you found others that haven't been able to find that kind of allowance that you're talking about? Yeah. So I, you know, so when I was going through my spiritual awakening 30 years ago, you know, I didn't have anyone to talk to. You know, I was in a corporate job flying around the world, you know, very busy. And yet I'm having past life experiences. I'm soul journaling. I'm starting to see things I might be hearing. You know, I see with my divine eyes. I'm hearing with my divine ears. I'm knowing a lot of things and nobody to talk to. So one of the things I did was I started to lead soul guided journaling workshops because, um, and I've taught all over the country. I've taught on uh, in Europe, Africa, Asia, South America. I've taught almost, I haven't taught in Antarctica yet <laughs> or Australia, but that will happen one day. Absolutely. Um, but I've, Absolutely. I've taught a lot. I've, you know, this, this simple practice completely changed my life because the guidance that you receive and you can do it every day or you can do it once a week. It's up to you. But to me, it's like every time you do this, um, you're strengthening that conscious connection with the soul. Mm -hmm. And in that conscious strengthening of that connection, you're actually beginning to embody more of the soul. Um, there was a Indian sage, his name was Sri Aurobindo, and he lived in the early 1900s, late 1800s through mid 1900s. And he was a lawyer who then had mystical experiences and spent his whole life chasing this, you know, this concept of the divine and the embodiment of the divine. And he called it the divinization of the human body, the divinization. Mm -hmm. And ever since I've learned about that, that's really what I feel is going on here. Um, it's just like, okay, so as an example, uh, think about a swimmer. And every time that swimmer jumps in the swimming pool and comes out, there's like a thin layer of water on the skin, right? What's well, the same thing when we spend time every day diving into our soul, right? That soul connection. And we come out of that experience. We are embodying more and more of that essence of that energy, right? Of that vibration frequency of the soul in the human body. That's what we're doing. We're actually embodying the soul, embodying the spirit, and I think, you know, for us, I feel like that's our next evolutionary step. 
because with that embodiment, we're, we're living where we are more peaceful and we are more loving and we're more compassionate and we have more bliss and we can give more and we can be of service because we are literally embodying those characteristics and qualities. Absolutely. And, and so I love that. So the practice is very fruitful and beneficial. And now you've just segued us into another level, as a matter of fact, where, and this gets into the lasting conversations where, you know, it's not me, it's not even about you and I talking right now. It's about a conveyance of a state of being that is possible. Um, and we're going to get into the hurricanes in just a second, but that level of, of a new resonance um, yeah. And I can speak for myself, if we're running around fearful and angry and all of these things, which may our stories and our come froms would have been very, very tangible and very, very right and true. And then, and I've certainly had those moments, there's got to be a better way or there is another way so yeah. that when the things are happening or they did happen, we can now not still live there and not carry all of that fracturedness and all of that tension and all of the goo and gunk, right? And yeah. so walk us through a little bit more of that because when we're in this, yeah. we can say light and, and I want to, um, and you're the perfect bridge for this, without, there's the spiritual, which can get airy fairy, which could then also disconnect. And I've certainly you know, been part of some of that. But this is something different now where it is very tangible. It is multi-aspected and multi-dimensional and rooted and grounded so that we are now walking forward. Um, and some people would say, well, how do you feel like, you know, you're just, you're, you're unicorns and rainbows all the time. Not necessarily, but it, it can feel like that to some people because right. we, we're coming from another space. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so, um, you know, it kind of takes me into that whole conversation about our awareness and our, um, and yes, yeah, so I like what you said about being grounded, right? This right. is, you know, this is practical. Um, right. You know, the the shift that's going on within us and the choice that we make to participate in our conscious evolution. Yeah. And what I have found is that um, over the years, that um, as our as our awareness expands, we move uh, from that purely focused. Uh, I always say the ego goes to the back seat, and the soul becomes your cosmic chauffeur, right? So mm -hmm. the ego is still there, but the soul is really driving the car now, right? And when we can live in that space, in my experience, it becomes life becomes more of an observation. Even though I'm participating fully in life, let there be no mistake. <laughs> right. My life is crazy, <laughs> but I can actually live my life with that grace and ease because I have allowed that connection with the soul to become stronger, um, more of that energy embedded in me. And you know, again, I think it's important to have conversations about it, Heather, which is why I love what you're doing here, because, you know, that's why I offer like a monthly soul guided journaling experience. Here's why. Because when this all started happening to me and I was waking up and I was learning and expanding and having magical experiences, I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. Right. And so I have, you know, this small group of people, we get together once a month and it's a, a safe, sacred space just what you're providing here. It's a safe, sacred space where we can talk about, you know, what's going on. And the basis of it is our soul journal, because we've been capturing, you know, the essence of the soul every day and maybe writing down synchronicities because, right. you know, that's a sign, right? That all these synchronicities are happening or maybe dreams, right? Maybe I had a dream right. or maybe I had a different consciousness experience and I don't have to feel... I don't have to feel weird about it because, right. you know, you're with a group of uh, human beings who are all having, you know, similar types of experiences, right? Because mm -hmm. I think we are. 
I think we all have the same types of experiences. It's just how do we incorporate that into our lives? And I think, you know, for me with the meditation and the soul guided journaling, I, you know, I always have this feeling like even if I'm alone, I'm supported. Right. Now I have the words in my soul to console me if I need to be consoled or if I need to be encouraged, the words are there to encourage me. And, you know, that gentle guidance and it's just meant for you, which is how beautiful is that, right? So absolutely beautiful. It's, oh, it's, yes. it's like a warm, fuzzy blanket for yourself, right? Yes, it is. And yeah. I'm so, um, and I know, you know, I, I, so I live in Florida and I'll go out to the beach and I'll take my solar journals and I'll be reading them and people stop by and say, Hey, what are you reading? <laughs> you know? And I'll tell them I'm reading my a really great book. I'm, <laughs> I'm reading, reading a really good book. But I'm, you know, my soul journal, people are like, hmm, that looks, yeah, hmm, that's interesting. That could be, you know, that could be fun. I'm going, it is, it's a lot of fun, you know, <laughs> and it's fun to have that record of your journey right. because sometimes, you know, we can feel like, you know, geez, like I, I feel like I'm stuck or I feel like I, I don't know which way to go or I don't, you know, all these questions. Right. And you know, when I'm in that space, I'll just, you know, grab my soul journals and maybe it's for the last couple months, maybe it's for last year. Um, and I'll just sit down and read and go through and I'll find, I'll find quotes. I'll find, uh, what I call soul mantras, you know, to live by. One of my favorites is, uh, simply allow all to unfold. Simply allow all to unfold. Now, I've had that mantra for almost 30 years. And let me tell you, that came out of a soul journal entry. And the, the more I live with it, the more I understand it. But it's good for me when I find myself in that turbulent space to just say to myself, simply allow all to unfold. You know, it comes back to that concept of surrender and um, you know, so I did some investigation into surrender because I never liked that word. For me, surrender meant to give up, right? I didn't like it. I'm like, why is everybody saying you should surrender, you know? And so I did some research and the actual um, etymology of the word, it comes from the 15th century. And it actually comes from the word surrendre, surrendre. And that word, it actually means to give back to give back so when you think about surrender think about surrendre which means to give back and i like to add to give back control of my life to my soul i was just thinking give back to ourself exactly right to give back to ourself yeah exactly right exactly so that's what this all this soul guided living is right so um, you know, soul guided living is I use a mantra of listen, align, act, listen, align, act. So we listen and we capture our guidance in the soul journal. We read that soul journal, we align our life, and then we take action. So it's very simple, right? Listen, align, mm -hmm. act. And that uh, practice, I, I call it a sacred practice, a soul-guided journaling, helps us to bring that all together. So what a journey and what a gift. And I'm so grateful that you um, asked me to be here so that I could share that because I really feel, you know, you were speaking about contributions earlier, and I really feel like that's, that's my contribution to... Mm -hmm the evolution of human beings is that, you know, getting closer with the self, the self, the soul, and following that guidance. In fact, I have a quote, if I could share with you, I love this quote. Um, so there was a gentleman, let's see, where is this quote? And um, in 19, okay, 1894, I got it here, 1894, there was a gentleman named Baird T. Spalding, and he went on a journey in India and Tibet and China for many years. And he met with all these teachers of the, of the East. And he wrote this series of books. It's fantastic. It's called The Life and Teaching of the Masters of the Far East. 
highly recommend it. Little tiny books, so much wisdom. But there's a quote in this book that just, for me, this was several years ago, it just was like, you're on the right path, right? You're on the right path. So in this book, it says, true mastery. So we talk about mastering our lives, right? Being the master of our universe. True mastery is living the instruction of the inner teacher. Oh, say that again. Very True nice. True mastery okay. is living the instruction of the inner teacher. The I inner love it. And for me, that just that just pulled it all together for me. I was like, that's amazing. Like that over, you know, a hundred years ago, this gentleman was in the Far East talking to all of these gurus and masters. And that, you know, that one sentence I took away from his like six book collection, it was, that's it right there. That's it. We are masters and we're masters because we're allowing that guidance to come to us and we're living it. We're living the instructions of the self. My goodness, how, how beautiful, divinely architected, right? It's so perfect. And and this is, again, <laughs> I, I know we're at this perfect wavelength right now because I was, as you were speaking, even just a few moments ago, oh, Laura's a born teacher. You can just go on and, on and be, and I know you've been a presenter and a public speaker very often. So it comes so naturally to you. And so here you have, you found this beautiful pearl that is reminding you like, oh, Laurel, the teacher, Laurel, the, the presenter that is, is that guide. And so, um, it's so beautiful. And then there was another thing. Oh, here we go. As we pre-chatted, this ties back into, as we are walking, perhaps those turbulent times. Now, not only did you, we both live in Florida, there have yeah. been two, two hurricanes, but you are on the West coast where everything was aimed right to you. Yes. That it was literally a turbulent time. We had we had 15 tornadoes around here, so there was that. Um, but to walk this walk, as you are describing, and with your elderly parents, so you had to evacuate not once but twice, if I'm right? Yeah, or so, just the ones. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so we, had, um, we had two hurricanes in less than two weeks. Yeah. Two. Right. Uh, never. I've lived here 27 years. It's right. Never happened before. The first hurricane, we didn't evacuate, but we got a storm, a highest storm surge. So during a hurricane, uh, the water, the you imagine the force of a hurricane going 120, 30 miles an hour, bringing all that water from the ocean inland. Right. It's called the storm surge, and it depends on mm -hmm. where the storm lands. So we had the highest storm surge we had ever had here was five feet, and we had eight and a half feet. Never happened before. So I live in a condo building. Just kind of as a story, we had three feet of water in the garage in the lobby of the building, which ruined almost all the cars. My car survived, but it's an older car. But mm -hmm. I think they towed 42 cars out of here that all were wow. destroyed. Um, and the elevators were destroyed. So that so that was just, I mean, that was a lot in and of itself. And that was the first one? That, that was, was Helene? One. That was that the first Helene. one. So now- you know, This has all been within the last month. Oh, this yeah, is, this, this is, this is just happened. not that long ago, right? <laughs> this is happening. Yeah. So then, um, yeah, so my, uh, I, I take care of my parents. They're 88. So I live on the second floor and they live on the third floor of this condo tower. So it's like living in a dorm. <laughs> so I take care of them. But you can imagine like no electricity, you know, no Wi Fi. You know, uh, we had water then, but it took a while to get that all back. So we finally get our electricity back. We finally got the elevators working again after we, you know, we we're getting the cars towed away. My dad's car was destroyed, which was very sad. Um, but all that, and then all of a sudden there's another hurricane. Now this hurricane, Milton, was a, what, at one point was a category five. That yep. is like 180 mile an hour winds. I mean, it yep. was like the biggest thing I've ever seen in my lifetime yep. coming yep. right at us. So we're like, we must evacuate. So. I took my parents, right, packed them up, put them in the car, went to my niece's house in Tampa. 
Well, she didn't feel comfortable in Tampa because right. she had an old house and th- single pane windows and yeah. big trees. Yeah. And so she was very uncomfortable. And, and it was aiming it right she at Tampa like, yeah. also. Yeah. 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 We yeah. So it was like, okay, we have to leave. Now this is like so I'm like, all right. So I'm there with my parents. So here we have. So here's the circus. We have me, we have my mother and father. They're both 88, going on 89. We have my brother and sister-in-law who are visiting from Ohio. Had never been in a hurricane before, okay? I have my nephew, his dog, a, a big chocolate lab. And then my niece and her two girls, three and five years old. Okay, so this is the group that we have to evacuate. And her, my niece's husband is a firefighter EMT, but he was working at the Tampa uh, Emergency Command Center. So he was not coming home. So, so, event, so it took a while because you can imagine we had, it was the biggest evacuation in the history of Florida. So there was, uh, there was no water. We ran out of gasoline, you know, food. I mean, it was, it was like an apocalypse and we're just trying to get out of town. So you've got millions of people. So we headed to Orlando because that's where I could find a hotel room, but we had to get three hotel rooms because we had nine people and the dog and we had to find a hotel that actually took dogs. So it was, you know, it was very stressful, uh, coordinating all this, you know, getting the gas to get to Orlando, which it took hours and hours and hours was, you know, something that should take an hour and a smidge took like three hours. Um, and then just, you know, at the, even at the hotel, so this one hotel was taking dogs and there was hundreds and hundreds of dogs there. And of course the hotel was oversold Yeah, and there were people walking in literally off the street, trying to find a room. I mean, this, this was probably one of the craziest things, my experiences in my life. And then I have, you know, the, the troops with me too. Right. So, but you know, as, and I followed, you know, my intuition because my intuition was, I'm going to go early and make sure that we actually have those hotel rooms. So my mom and I went early in the morning and, um, I was glad that we did because we actually did, um, you know, get rooms, thank God. And then I was, you know, we had insulin from my parents. So I had, you know, that had to be kept cold and I needed refrigerators. I mean, it was just a lot. Right. Um, so talk about, you know, be, and I, you know, I was, you know, I was in the moment, right? So you're in the present moment, but you're also feeling, I mean, I felt grounded. I didn't fall apart or anything. Everybody else was falling apart, you know, because it's pretty strange. Even with it within your group or were you kind yeah. of, are they part of this sphere of, of the, the juice that we're talking about? Um, um, or that they, they were having their own German journeys oh, in their own moments. Yeah. They were having yeah. their own day. And that's okay because it, it was very intense. It really is. And if you're oh, a medical, you, you, if you're scared about your insulin, yeah. I mean, it's, it's right. a big deal. It is a big deal. And yeah. then the hurricane goes by and then, you know, then we can't go home. And I right. only had the rooms for like three or four days and we didn't have water. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have sewers. We didn't, the water. Back, back where you live or even in Orlando? Yeah, no, where I live. The okay. hotel Cause there were fine. pockets, there were pockets yeah. that even in, there were pockets cause there were then subsequent tornadoes all over the place sure. that, sure. that lost power also. So, but where you were in your evacuation space had the power, yeah. but you could I not get you, back. I couldn't get home. You could not, you couldn't get home. Yeah. Couldn't get home because the roads were all covered with debris. And yeah. so we ended up staying away. We ended up staying, uh, eight days before we came home. Wow. Okay. Because, because there was no, well, there was no electricity, no water, no sewage, no Wi-Fi, any of that cable, no cell towers, um, you, no gasoline. Yeah. I mean, you know, I actually went out at five o'clock in the morning after the storm and got some gas just so that I knew my tank was full and I could get back, you know, get back home. But yeah, so we had we were ended up, and then I had to ask the hotel, could I please stay longer? You know, we need mm-hmm. all these people, and they accommodated us, and I was so incredibly grateful. Mm-hmm. But um, and then, you know, we came home eight days later, 
And then you still, you have to deal with the cleanup of everything because it was just, you know, our, our property is fine. Our, you know, thank God um, we have storm shutters and we were high enough, but you know, it looked like, like to your point, tornadoes. I mean, all the trees here, just, you know, so much destruction, so much destruction. It's just unbelievable. So um, yeah, it's, you know, living this, I can say that if I wasn't meditating every day, if I wasn't right. doing my soul guided journaling, if I wasn't tapping into my, my own soul mantras that I use, if, you know, all of that, you know, what actually was so useful and, you know, trying to be calm and maintaining mm -hmm. that and just, you know, observing what was going on and taking care of everyone, you know, and then getting everyone, you know, back home. And then the subsequent follow-up from that, I mean, it was, they had, we had what millions of people that didn't have electricity and water right. and it was, you know, so it's, um, you know, life is going to happen. Um, and it's just, you know, how are you going to choose to react to it? Right. And you can do so very mindfully doesn't mean that it's not hard it right. is hard but um at least you can you know for me I felt you know I felt very you know just very grounded during the whole thing uh didn't get upset you know which was good because there was a lot of people uh around there but uh but we made it through and I was grateful I was grateful for the help I was grateful for the hotel and I'm grateful for all the people that there were so many people reaching out to me to make sure that, you know, we were okay. Um, right. So that was, you know, that was very special too. So I think, you yeah. know, you're right. I mean, this, you know, it's, you have to ride those waves of life, but the, I think the more tools you have, um, the more practices, you know, what, what fits in your lifestyle um, mm -hmm. You really can start to gather these tools and use them uh, in a in a very specific way, and um, and just know that you know it's all going according to plan. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And you know to to maintain the proverbial calm within the storm, right? Yes. So it's That's not true. to discount that the things aren't happening, whatever your thing is, right? Um, However, where we can find that very source core, core within ourselves right. to, to maintain some balance. That also said, I don't know about you, well, the people around us and the earth angels and the people that can have our backs. And it felt very palpable. I remember literally feeling, oh, someone's hugging me and praying for me right now. I just feel it, right? Because there was a lot of high energy trying to lift things and tell Milton to back off and, and all of those things. So this is where we can receive such fruit and such gifts, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And turn the TV off, you know, so sometimes not having electricity gives us this time to, right. to really go in or talk to another human being and, um, or color or write or, or let out a scream if you have to, whatever it is, but um, to not be necessarily glued um, unless and until you need some news, but otherwise th everything we're talking about is, is to help be our own news, right. Or find, find the discernment of something besides what might be screaming at us. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, when you, when, after you experience something like this, then, and you come back to your community, then there are like so many opportunities for you mm -hmm. to help others right? and to be of service to others. And there's, you know, I think donations are at an all time high right now here. Right. You know, everybody's outside clearing off the debris, you know, anything that we, you know, we had a lot of stuff fall off the roof of the building. So we're still collecting that around the property. Um, but it's just, um, uh, and then, you, and then I think you, you know, just begin to see the generosity of the mm -hmm. human spirit right. because people, I know, um, uh, there's, they're, they have just started so many 
uh, drives around here, you know, to we, you know, like we, it's almost like we're adopting people that have lost their homes and then, mm -hmm. and everything. And we're like, okay, what does, what does this family need? And we're just getting them everything that they need. And mm -hmm. then there's another one, you know, there's another family. I think they said like 4,000 homes were destroyed in our County alone. And that's destroyed. Oh, wow. That's not everything else that was, you know, uh, where there was damage, right? So right. there's a lot of people right now in this area that need help. So um, right. it feels good to be able to support others and to give and to be grateful. I mean, we were so blessed to be able to uh, get through that. Two hurricanes, two. <laughs> two. 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 Yeah, back to back. Yeah, it's, it's um, it is a lot. And, you know, some people are going through, you know, literal war right now and other people yes. are going through other medical things right now. Exactly. Um, yeah. So whatever, whatever our own personal tornadoes are or storms, this is where, um, and when we're not feeling so grounded and blessed and all of these sparkly things, that's where we can reach out for help. Right. And ask. Yes. Hi everybody. Our conversation with Laurel will continue in the next episode. For right now, you can find out more on her website at laurelgeis.com. That's laurelgeise, G-E-I-S-E, dot -E, com. And we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>